Thank you very much for the opportunity to present our work today. We have nothing to disclose. As we all know, injury is the leading cause of death and disability for children worldwide. Significant disparities in risk and outcome have also been widely described, including differences in both risk of injury and mortality. This evidence of racial, ethnic, and insurance-related differences in pediatric injury indicates that there are broader contextual factors driving who gets injured and how severe those injuries turn out to be. We expect that many such drivers of pediatric injury are rooted in the social determinants of health, which are defined in part as the conditions in which people are born, grow, work, live, and age. Social determinants of health can be influential at the patient level, affecting access to health promoting resources, including food, medical care, and safe home environments, as well as at the neighborhood level, with contextual factors such as poverty level, crime rates, traffic patterns, job access, and availability of green spaces, potentially influencing when, where, and how injuries occur. As such, social determinants of health may represent targets for upstream neighborhood-based interventions to mitigate conditions that drive injuries. Our objective for this study was to assess the relationship between social determinants of health and pediatric injury at the neighborhood level. We hypothesized that we would see higher rates of injury in neighborhoods with higher rates of poverty, crime, and fewer green spaces. We also expected to see hotspots of injury morbidity throughout our region. We conducted a retrospective review of data from the Cincinnati Children's Trauma Registry of all children 16 years of age and younger who were admitted with a pediatric injury between 2010 and 2019. We evaluated their demographic characteristics, mechanism of intent and injury, and outcomes from admission. We also geocoded home addresses to quantify injury at the neighborhood level and to evaluate the relationship between injury admissions and neighborhood level factors. Over 20,000 children were admitted for injury during the study period. 4,527 children were excluded due to inability to geocode, age greater than 16, length of stay of zero, suggesting that they were in our registry due to trauma activation but were not admitted, and unplanned readmissions for the same injury. This resulted in a final cohort of over 15,000 independent admissions for injury. The median age of our patient population was nine, and the overall cohort was just over 54% male. But notably, patients with self-inflicted injuries were much more likely to be female. We used a, self, a socioeconomic deprivation index as a composite measure assessing poverty, housing, education, and health insurance status by census tract. The deprivation index is normalized to a zero to one range with higher values indicating more deprivation. The overall deprivation index for the cohort was 0.38. Patients who were victims of assault and abuse were from neighborhoods with significantly higher deprivation indices with a mean index of 0.44 for abuse patients and 0.51 for assault patients. The overall cohort was approximately 20% black as were the cohorts for abuse self-inflicted and unintentional injuries. Notably, patients who were victims of assault were much more likely to be black than the other sub cohorts. We then turned to evaluating injury admissions and hospital days, also known as inpatient bed days at the neighborhood level. These figures depict the deprivation index on the x-axis and the admission rate per thousand children in a census tract or the inpatient bed day rate per thousand children in a census tract on the y-axis. These figures demonstrate a significant correlation between inpatient bed day rates and admission rates with neighborhood deprivation. We found a similar association between neighborhood admission rates and crime rates and an inverse association between admission rates and green spaces. Both of these were also statistically significant associations. We then used geospatial mapping to look at these associations for our region. This figure is a bivariate map demonstrating the association between deprivation and inpatient bed day rates by census tract. It demonstrates the significant neighborhood to neighborhood variability across our region, while also reinforcing the strong correlation between deprivation and injury related morbidity. Specifically, census tracts with high deprivation and high inpatient bed day rates are depicted in dark purple, while those with low deprivation and low inpatient bed day rates are in light purple demonstrating that large areas have consistent correlation between deprivation and inpatient bed day rates. The most notable limitation to our work is that we cannot account for pediatric patients hospitalized at other centers for injury related reasons. However, we anticipate that this will be a very small number of patients as we are the only level one trauma center in the county and admit 
greater than 90% of all children who require hospitalization. This suggests that most injured children would be admitted to our facility if they required admission, even if they are initially assessed at an outlying facility. We also limited our analyses to children less than or equal to 16 years of age in order to eliminate older adolescents who may be more likely to be admitted at an adult facility. Secondly, we use an area-based measure related to the socioeconomic deprivation as a surrogate measure for the multitude of social determinants of health that may influence prevalence and type of injury in a community. We recognize that this may oversimplify an exceptionally complicated interplay between social factors and injury type and severity, but believe that this surrogate best approximates a variety of potential factors that may affect injury in our region. In conclusion, we found that increased community deprivation was associated with higher rates of injury-related admission and bed day rates in our region. Our results demonstrate that geospatial analysis can be used to identify high-risk neighborhoods and that social determinants of health may serve as valuable targets for upstream intervention. Importantly, it is crucial that research such as ours, such as ours be paired with interventions and efforts to address these root causes of pediatric injury in order to avoid what some have called the health disparities industrial complex, where academic productivity around disparities flourishes, but no efforts are made to make changes for the communities that are studied. Our next step in this work are to continue building our community team, including key stakeholders and community members. We are in the process of identifying one neighborhood with disproportionately high rates of injury where we will focus, building our theory of improvement. We will continue to work with the community to identify key drivers of injury and then begin to design and test interventions, hopefully leading us to identify those that are the most effective in addressing the root causes and reducing pediatric injury. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present our work today.